There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world, I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast, and I'm very excited today to be joined in studio via StreamYard from Tampa, Florida to Idaho, my good friend, the one, the only Chris Geth. And Chris, what is up, my brother? Howdy, partner. I feel like that we've just done a podcast, the, the, the amount of we've been chatting prior to recording here. But it's always good to see you, my friend. Thank you it for is, having me on. It is, man. And this is the first time I've had you on. It's a long time coming. I should have had you on a long time. But you're an absolute jet setter. As am I. It's tough for us to get together. And uh, have, in fact, I even canceled on you last Friday. I had some personal shit come up in the last second. But now, we, now we're here and we're knocking this out. And dude, you have so much going on. But for you guys in my audience that don't know Chris, and I'm pretty sure most of, most of you guys do, uh, he is an internationally renowned business person, celebrity trainer, physique transformation specialist, and he's been voted the world's number one trainer. He's also the co-founder of Chris Geth- Gethin Gyms, the founder of Chris Gethin um, uh, training now, uh, former editor in chief of bodybuilding.com. And he's an author of the number one bestseller body by design and host of the Chris Gethin podcast of which I've been on three times. I have so, so luxury honored, but man, it's an honor to have you here today. Before we jump into, we got all these talking points we want to hit. Um, where are you going right now? Like in, from your, from a mindset standpoint, cause I've been asking a lot of people coming on the Jay Campbell podcast, like Obviously, the world is bifurcating. We know that, right? You're buying property in Mexico. I've been involved in looking into buying property in Mexico. Like, do you see the world getting, you know, how strange do do you see the world getting in the next three to five to 10 years? Like, do you, I mean, are we on the verge of a biomedical revolution slash golden age, or are we on the verge of the world splitting off and all of us, you know, having to figure out how it kind of shakes out? Well, I, want to be the optimist. I don't want to be a pessimist. However, the way that things have been happening over the past few years, yeah, and we know that how, you know, like we I just found out a couple of days ago that by 2030 in California, you're not going to be able to get an Uber <laughs> that is dr- driven by a human. Everything <laughs> will be self-driven. I'm like, you know what? The world is definitely getting smaller. So yeah, yeah. I am looking at properties overseas or somewhere in the boonies because Society is very cha- is changing a lot. If I think of what has happened in my lifetime, yeah. you know, and it's the last 10 years has accelerated so quickly. We call it advancement. I don't yeah. know if we want to call it advancement. Yeah. It's something that I'm trying to increase my perception of and being very, very aware. And, you know, I grew up in Wales where we have more sheep than humans. And I feel that unfortunately, uh, with, we have the herd mentality. We're just yeah. being sheep, sir, and we're following, you know, what is the shepherd of the top of the quarry, the rock, the rock face. You know, we're cliff diving, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's not a pretty sight. But I want to be optimist, so I want to just focus on what I'm doing and not really right. get influenced by anyone else. And you know, like to, you know, maybe look at somewhere overseas where it's kind of untouched. Yeah, bro. I mean, like, you know, I'm glad you're honest about it. You know, sometimes I ask that question and, you know, nobody wants to take that, but uh, of course I know you and I know how you are. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a weird world, but you kind of hit on it, right? You said we are in control of our vibration and we're in control of us, right? Like that's the one thing that we have inevitable control over. And that's really all you can focus on right now. You really can't get caught up in the geopolitic bullshit you know, all the stuff that's gone on in the past three years and stuff like that. But you're right. It's kind of like you almost have to have like an eye in the back of your head so that you kind of are planning, you know, if and when something goes down, like, you know, you do have a bug out bag or you have a backup plan and obviously having properties or having multiple passports, you know, in locations outside of the United States is probably not a bad idea. 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you, man. It, 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 it's very strange. It seems like I just did a podcast with um, Susan Braxton yesterday. And I know you know who she is. Uh, she, I, I, we were talking about how kids today are so enslaved by devices, right? Like you and I are, you know, around the same age, you're a little bit younger than I, but you, you, you know, you and I grew up in a world where we didn't have computers, bro. Like if we had to do research and you're a writer, we had to lo- do the research. We had to go to the library and pull out the card catalog and use the Dewey set decimal system and have the library and then go back to the thing and get it. And, and we went through all that. And there was, there was like work in actually finding knowledge or finding information. And nowadays, bro, these kids just ask the screen for the answer. And on top of asking the screen for the answer, the screen lies to them and they don't know the difference. <laughs> and unfortunately, if somebody was to go and get alcohol from the liquor store or drugs from their drug dealer, they have to make the effort to exactly. do that. Yep. However, there's probably 12 drugs on this phone as well. So when they are do. Googling, they're going to go down some other rabbit hole. So now today's society has been trained to be distracted. No one has focused to follow through anymore. You know, it's very unfortunate. It's true. I mean, it's 100% true. It's it's funny you say that because we went from that point, we went into the idea that our kids literally can just hold a phone and order food and have it come to the house and they do nothing other than walk 20 to 50, depending on how big your house is, uh, to pick it up that they leave it on the porch and then they just eat. So you're right. Like we, we live in a society now where people, I mean, we live in an abundant society. If you really think about it, like it's abundance, even poverty stricken people have that ability now because obviously phones and screens are so ubiquitous and so cheap, but it's just, it's weird. Cause you know, you were saying, well, we were talking off air. We've seen so much dramatic technological change in just the last 10 to 15 to 20 years you almost can't even compare it to like the first 30 years that you and I were alive on this planet. You know what I mean? Like it's so divergent and so vast and it really makes you, I mean, from a perspective standpoint, you really do have to look at things as like, wow, like I can't even imagine what a 15 year old, you know, experiences nowadays versus like what you and I in our forties and fifties are looking at. And then think about, dude, think about our parents. Think about people in their 70s and 80s, you know, now like having to deal with technology and just like how insane and and like you said, the perfect word is distracting it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I remember during the C word when, uh, you know, my parents would go to a restaurant and they had to scan a QR code and they're like, what? <laughs> how? You know, I don't even know how to listen to music on this th- on this thing. You know, it's just how it is. Like a lot of my family are farmers. My sister doesn't even have an Instagram. You know, it's That's just awesome. how they are. So yeah. when you are there, you're having a conversation. You're having a real thorough conversation. No one's messing around on their phones. Right. You know, because it's a very different world. And sometimes, of course, I'm here. There's a lot of opportunities. I love the U.S. Right. for that fact. But right. sometimes when I go back to Wales, I'm like, God, I want to go back to my childhood. Right, because dude. this is kind of how it still is right now. Small mindedness, but I love that small mindedness sometimes. But sometimes bro, that open mindedness can kill up. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're connected to your family and you're connected to people and like you're not distracted. Like you said, I mean, like it's great to be on social media and in and, and, and that and stuff. And there are benefits to that. But the truth is when you're around other people and you're experiencing the human energy field of other people, like genuinely there, it's so much better than a freaking Zoom or a video call. Call. Not to say that they don't benefit, right? Because you and I are having this call right now, two thousand miles away, but and and you know, and this is going to benefit people. But yeah, dude, it's like people have lost touch, and that's why, you know, and we can talk about this as we break this down. But like, that's why, like, in person meetings, mm-hmm. you know, whether they're biohacking events or training events or whatever it is, like, you know, when you get out and you demonstrate, you know, you can talk about your time in India recently, and and obviously we were talking off air, but you know, you meet with a lot of people. And they come up and they shake your hand and they're so excited and stuff. Oh, fuck, Chris Gethin, you know, and it's like, wow, you know, like I've been following you forever and I train the way you train and blah, blah, blah and stuff like that. But when you meet people, it's so much different than just you and I doing a Zoom call and having 100 people listening to us. Oh, 100%. You know, every now and again, I'll feel, you know, sometimes if you've had, if you've done plant medicine, which I know you have, you have yes. to be called. You have to be called towards it. You can't just go in there out of curiosity. You need right. to be called. And, you know, like I did a 10-day Vipassana 
because at nice. that time I was like, okay, I need this silent retreat for 10 days totally. because I am too connected to everything around yes. me and I'm not connected to myself. Yeah. And it was the hardest experience of my entire life because I couldn't read, I couldn't listen to music, I had no sound, I couldn't have conversation, couldn't make eye contact. But after the four or five days when half the people had left, um, <laughs> you have to observe yourself and your thoughts in perfect equanimity. And yes. that's the only way I find that you can do it. And every now and again, you just have to go through that boot camp. Like I'm speaking at uh, the Biohacking Summit in Amsterdam next week. One of the main reasons I'm going there, not to speak, not to educate, but to hang out with people like our yeah. friend, Dr. Dom is going to yep. be there. Tim yep. is going to be there. Awesome. We're not necessarily, you know, we're, we're just thinking about hanging out and interacting. You know, we call our pack the, the wolf pack. And yep. we have to, as males, we have to have that connection. I'm sure females do too, but I just can't speak on their behalf. <laughs> Dude. Only you would use the word equanimity on the Jay Campbell podcast. That's why I love you. That was an awesome word. You dropped it perfectly. But yeah, dude, I mean, I mean, we 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 gotta have bro time. I mean, I mean, there's 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 no doubt that like spending time together and then of course spending time in nature. And I do want to get into your talking points. I told you we were gonna talk about a lot of different things, but bro, that's the biggest issue now is that most people are so distracted that they literally cannot even go and do 15 to 20 to 30 minutes a day of introspective reflective work. And you know, you know, and you, you and I know you don't have to sit in Lotus with your eyes closed and come up with like what you think is meditation. I mean, it literally is just sitting in nature with nothing going on and you just observing, you know, people say, Oh, but the drunk monkey keeps talking to me. I can't stop the chatter. You don't have to, you just sit in nature with nothing and listen and observe. And this is a true story. I tell people this all the time. If you just go into nature, no matter how much drunk monkey is going on in your mind, no matter how much anxiety you have in your life and you listen to the birds, mm -hmm. the birds are so connected to everything that is including ourselves that they will literally start changing the tonality of their singing or slash chirping or whatever it is they're doing um, to lower your cortisol, to lower your reticulated activated system so that it literally de-stresses you. Now, people will hear me say that because I've been saying that for two years now and that, that's full-blown woo. And I'll be like, you want to you want to bet me? Go out in nature and do it yourself and try it. And I, dude, I've had many, many people do this and they come back to me if they're honest and they're like, dude, Holy shit. Yeah. So it's like, I, if we could just, Chris, if we could just get people to just go into nature for 15 minutes, 10 minutes, every single morning and do nothing but listen and observe, everything would change. Yeah, 100%. And that's why I love where I live here in Boise. Right on my doorstep, I have over 100 miles of trails right on my doorstep. So for me, when I was getting ready for my Ironman events and ultra marathons, I loved it. Because I'm not, I'm, I'm much like what you mentioned. I can't go and sit in that lotus position yes. and just meditate. You know, I did it when I was at the Vipassana because I was kind of forced into it. But <laughs> uh, it's active meditation is yeah. the key. Right. Leaving your headphones at home because half the people I see on the trails have got their right. I got to listen to my headspace, bro. It, it, yeah, some type of distraction, right? You know. But listen to the sounds of, you know, the, the, the earth underneath your feet, the, the wind in the grass. And that's the one thing that I noticed when I was on that Vipassana. On the fifth or sixth day, I was noticing things on the path from where I was sleeping to the actual meditation hall that I hadn't noticed the five days previous. And I was hearing this, the sound of the wind running through the grass, which I hadn't heard of before because I'm so focused on myself. I'm so distracted. Same with the drive to the Vipassana, which was about five hours. Didn't really notice the mountain range or the horizon or the clouds. I noticed all of that on the way back because yes. now I'm present. Now, like I said, you know, I'll use equanimity again. I'm observing everything in perfect equanimity. You know, the first couple of days, I'm looking at the path that we get to walk around. I'm like, this isn't long. This isn't enough. I need more than this. But then after like five days, I'm like, this is plenty. This is what abundance is. And this nice. is the abundance that can actually help us. Unfortunately, the abundance that's surrounding us now is harming our future. It's not healing us. And, you know, as, as easy things are getting now with Uber Eats and Netflix and blah, 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 we're just getting sicker. We're getting fatter. Fatter and, and sicker. sicker. Yeah. Bro, it's beautiful, so, man. That's, that's why you should start your day with hard shit. 
you know, do your cardio, do your exercise, do your ice baths, start your day with hard shit. So the rest of it will be easier. That's so beautiful, bro, man. That's why I love you, man. I mean, like you're so connected. I mean, it, it really is the truth. Like, I mean, look, we could take the rest of this podcast and just talk about like how people like us who maximize our bodies, you know, our external presentation to the world, actually, as we do that, and as we get better at that, we learn that the real purpose of that is to connect to the source. And like you said, you know, going into stillness, doing the Vipassa 10 days, I mean, like, it's so true. Like, I mean, I, I haven't done a 10 day, but I mean, I do this, this is a religious part of my life now. I mean, I spend an hour every day, sometimes 90 minutes. Plus I use my vibrogenics for 30 to 40 minutes a day. And I go into like very deep source field frequencies, you know, all scale or stuff. And, and like, it's insane. Like the more you practice it, the deeper you can go. And as you just said, the more you start noticing things that you would never notice before, you know, you talk about the wind going through the grass that's literally hearing the source field. Like when you, as you know, you talked about plant medicine, you know, I talk about this all the time, but like when you do five MEO and you, I, get, I've, I've got the opportunity to do that in a few weeks. So carry on. I'd love to hear. Oh, about bro. That. I, so let me just tell you. So like I've done five MEO now five times in my life and it is massively expanded my conscious awareness. It's expanded my, 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 my knowledge of the planet of, of the universe of source of everything. And I will tell you that when you do that and you might, well, I know you will, you'll know right away in the first trip, but through the first or second trip for most people, you instantly know what the source field is. You know what the definition of God is because you are hearing a vibrational hum that can't be you. I mean, there are no words to explain it. I've attempted to do it, but I, I, I don't really think it's something, you know, if, if there's like a word, you know, in the consciousness ladder, it's called ineffable, ineffable, right? Pure consciousness. And that's literally what it is, but it's definitely a frequency. It's a vibrational intonation or hum. And I swear to you, like, I won't do it right now, but when I do OM meditations, which I do every now and then, I don't do them all the time, but I can, I can literally change the intonation in my vocal cords to hear that sound. And that sound is exactly what you said it was, which is the sound of what, again, we assume, or we into it is the wind through the grass, which Chris, mm -hmm. I'm not kidding you. That sound is the sound of the source field. Mm -hmm. It is the sound. Well, I like to say it's like the sound of everything and no thing. So it's like, you're literally living in this field of consciousness. And again, you, you know, you see nothing, it's stillness and mind space. And that's what's so weird because you have this, you have this assumption or feeling that you're out of your body. But yet you're totally lucid. So maybe think of it as your third eye or your pineal gland is awake and you're seeing things, but you're really not. But you hear. And that sound is exactly what you said it was, which is literally like a wind or a wispy wind, like whoosh, through yeah. the grass rattling. And I'm telling you, man, like I tell people this, you can do this all. Anybody can do this. You can go out into a giant grass field anywhere in the world. And hopefully you have no people around. Maybe you have your animal dog or something like that, but nothing else. And you just lay down and you listen. That's what God is. That's what the sound of nature is. It is this blissful buzzing. Like you hear insects, you hear birds, you hear things on the ground. I mean, you you really do hear everything. Yeah, 100%. But none of us are present to actually hear it. That's true. Or, well, maybe we hear it, we don't listen. We're not right. listening to it. We, we just hear it. We kind of brush over it. And, you know, a lot of a lot of kids today will never go into nature. You Nothing. ask somebody, okay, what does a potato grow from? They'll probably tell you a tree. They just have no idea, you know? And that's the unfortunate part. It's not something that's educated in school. Okay, well, now we're going to go spend time in nature without our phone, without our device, because that should be part of the educational system. Of course, it's something that we need to reoccur, uh, you know, on a frequent basis, because we forget very quickly. You know, I'm one of those people. I did the Vipassana. You start going back into your normal cycle. It's like, okay, what can I do? I know there's a sensory deprivation tank that's literally... Yep. 10 minutes down the road, I will yep. jump in there, you know? So there's certain things that you can do, but you have to really want it because a lot of us, I'm probably, you're probably the same, would wake up in the morning with anxiety. You look at your emails, you look at your WhatsApp, ah! like, oh my, yeah, exactly, panic attack. And that <laughs> dictates the rest of your day. It's just like 
someone eating cereal in the morning and now they're going to have cravings for the rest of the day for that cereal or something right. sugary. So we get addicted to anxiety. We get addicted to stress. And, you know, we may be doing all these biohacks to reverse our biological age, but sometimes I'm thinking to myself, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm doing all this. However, I cannot manage my sense of being, my lifeline. That is where it starts. Everything else is supplemental on top of it. But, you know, that icing is useless unless I ground this cake first, you know? And a lot yeah. of us just look for the shiny objects, the icing, whatever, but don't deal with the anxiety, don't deal with the stress because it's much like dopamine, you know, if we're sympathetic dominant and we're dopamine dominant, we're going to be seeking that stress and getting addicted to it. Much like, you know, you get older people on the, on the, you know, on the real, on the estate, you know, that they want to gossip, they want to cause problems because they're addicted to it. And yeah. that's going to be us if we're not careful. It's totally true, dude. I mean, like to get back to that, you know, we could talk about morning uh, rituals and stuff, but if you, if you start your day, I don't care who you are. If you start your day with the first move is picking up the phone, you're done. You're, yeah. I mean, you are absolutely done. You have to live, especially at your, our levels. I mean, you have to have a ritualistic practice, whatever it is, whether you wake up in the morning and you gratitude, you know, you start journaling on like five or six things that you're grateful for. Uh, for me, I literally, the first thing is I go out in the backyard. I don't get coffee. I don't take my sup morning supplements. I don't check my growth hormone. I don't do anything until I go out in the backyard. My dog Thor is my spiritual animal. He follows me and I will literally sit down and I will sun gaze for 10 minutes and I have nothing going on. There's no thoughts. It's just the red light of the sun of that, you know, ultra magnetic spectrum of the sun at that point, just hitting my body and my body just feeling like, wow, I'm so grateful. Right? Like, but I'm not thinking it because I'm, in a place of this is just what I do. And, and by the way, it doesn't matter where I am, whether I'm in Florida or Mexico or, or Thailand or anywhere in the world, the, 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 the rituals doesn't change. Now it might change, Chris, as you know, if like inclement weather or something like that. Right. But like you can still go out into nature and sit and let the rain hit you. Mm. Yeah. Skin is waterproof. I always tell people, you know, if someone hasn't done their cardio and they tell me it's raining outside, <laughs> of course, I'm going to roll my eyes. But I always say your skin's waterproof. Don't worry about it. You know, you're not going to drown from it. But yeah, that is something that I really need to figure out myself, Jay, because I'm one of those people that goes to bed super early, like 730 at night. Yeah. And I like to read. Yeah before yep. I go to bed, but I'm yep. up at like 4 a.m. So yep. I'm not sun gazing. I'm not going right. outside at that time. Right. So it's usually I will grab my coffee, then it's my cardio, then it's my sauna, then it's my ice bath. Yep. Then eventually I'll be able to get uh, the red frequencies of the sun and earth ground, et cetera. Well, I mean, in, in truth, I go to bed pretty early now. I don't go to bed that early. I go to bed usually around 9, 45, 10. So sometimes for me, I, there's no sun. And right now, like, it's end of the summer here in Florida and it doesn't get light until seven 15 in the morning. So I'm definitely up an hour and 15, but you know, I'll like right now, what I'll do is I usually wake up and I read, you know what I mean? Like I, there, there's no, and again, this is for everybody watching the show. Like there should not be technology even close to your sleeping quarters, right? Like I don't care if you're in a one yeah. bedroom apartment or a large house, everything should be as far away as possible from a charging standpoint. And again, you should not be, ref, you know, reflexive or you know of getting up and reaching over for the phone and looking and saying ah you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. that that should not be happening so i mean you and, and there's a lot of different ways to do things and stuff like that but normally i i mean i'm like you i'm reading through, through so many books that i'll just you know read for 15 or 20 minutes and then i'll get up and i'll take my supplements and i'll inject my growth or i'll do you know whatever it is i'm going to do and then i go outside but you're right. Like there should be no involvement with technology before 8 a.m. That doesn't mean you can't go on your computer if you wake up at four in the morning or 430 in the morning and write or create things and stuff like that. But you should not be involved in, you know, texting and messaging people and just getting into that, you know, insanity of like checking social media and stuff like that until you've cleared out, you know, quote unquote, the fit, the, uh, the, the internal work, you know, the, the meditative, reflective, introspective stuff. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, you, you brought up a good point about having your phone on charge. As we know, when you have your phone on charge, it creates even more radiation oh, yeah. that, that could possibly, quote unquote, be over the safe standards. Like we know the iPhone 12 just got banned in France and it seems like Germany, Spain, um, well, Belgium are soon to follow. 
Now, 43, uh, 42 or 43 phones have been banned over the years because of this radiation. And we're sleeping with it on charge next to our heads. You crazy? Dude, you know, but that's, to... that's what people do. That's what people Dude. do. And that's one of the reasons Like I, I spent like six months of the year away staying in hotel rooms. And that's one of the things that I don't like. I unplug everything, obviously. But you're still getting penetrated by other people's Wi-Fi and uh, you know, EMFs, whatever. So I do whatever I can. I have my little EMF mitigating devices, my Faraday blankets and whatever. You can't control everything, but there's a certain amount that you can do to keep your head afloat. Just don't drown in it. Dude, I have to show you this. I can't believe you just said that. You made me, you triggered me so hard, but check this out, dude. I'm going to share. So I'm sharing my telegram real quick here. Let me, let me blow this up. Can you see that? Yes, I can. So this is, so my wife and I have not bought a phone for three years. So I bought a new iPhone 15 Pro Plus, whatever, you know, best camera. And look at what it says at the very top of that. Your package has been released by the government agency. Oh, wow. By the government agency. That's insane. That is insane. Dude, when I got that this morning, I put that in one of my private groups. And I was like, well, there you go. My new i15 Pro Plus has been released. I said, what the F? I guess full of tracking, biometric, and probably my new social credit score. That's insane. Dude. Hey, did you, did you switch your phone off at the end, at the earlier part of the week when they were testing everybody's so phone? I, so we played the game. My wife didn't. I mean, my wife did and I didn't. But, dude, I literally, we were coming out of Costco when that happened. And it, I, we weren't paying attention. And I, it was like on a charging stand in my wife's uh, SUV and it buzzed and it was so weird. They definitely hit us with some sort of, like, well, you, know, you know, what was freaky because I knew that it was happening at 1220 mountain time. The alarm started going off at, at, at 1217. They were early. And I noticed in the print that they put out there approximately. So they put it out early. I just, I just powered down immediately. I, Dude, I mean, I can't happens. even imagine what they hit us with because it was in my car. I mean, like I said, my wife's SUV. We just got down to Costco. We weren't even paying attention. I wasn't thinking about it, and it was definitely an energetic signature that came from the phone that was definitely like not normal. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, I don't want to go all conspiratorial and stuff like that. I have no idea what they were doing. But, bro, I mean, literally, I just got to let you. I, you just saw it. It's been released by the government agency. I mean, I bought it through Apple. Yeah. See, what is the association? <laughs> here? I guess now we know. You know, and, and that's the thing. It's, it's just like politics. So, like, a lot of them just don't hide it. They just don't hide it anymore. No, but we, what but we does still that do it. Mean? It was yeah. released by the government agency. It's now on route. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're basically being tracked now. Dude, I'll stop sharing, but dude, that's insane. I mean, when I saw that, because you said that, you're like, yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, but I mean, we all are, man. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, we live in a different world, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's bizarre, but you know, just getting back into like biohacking stuff. I mean, obviously you and I were talking about red light and, mm -hmm. um, why don't you just share with us? Cause obviously you're doing cold therapy. You're doing cold plunges. Like what tech are you using? Do you just have like a, your own homemade one? Or are you using a specific company? What with a sauna and ice bath? You mean? Yeah. Oh, a sauna. I've got a clear lighter, a low EMF. So I had Brian Hoyer here of, um, uh, oh God, what's it called? Something healing is his company. And, uh, he's a building biologist. He's been to Ben's place as well. Yep. And he checked yep. our house and he checked my sauna at the same time and checked my ice bath. I've got the Morosco. For nice. EMFs as well, because that is a grounded uh, ice bath. So that's what I'll use in the morning is the clear light and the uh, Morosco. I just like having a Morosco or any sort of cold plunge will do just because it's so convenient. When I had that old trough like seven or eight years ago, you're yeah. not going to put ice in there all the time. And you do right, it like right, right, right. It's too much work. Yeah. Yeah. But now with this, I, I don't mind getting in there twice a day because it's cold. It's quick dip. And so you're doing it, you do it right when you wake up in the morning and then be like an hour before you go to bed or like how, how do you have it broken up? Yeah, so I'll do my cardio first thing in the movement, uh, morning. I like to start with movement. Maybe that's walking a dog. Maybe yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. Got, I've got one of those Carol bikes, the AI bikes. So yep, I like yep, to do yep. it work. I did yep. 65 sprints on that this morning. Nice. And, uh, and then I usually follow that up with a sauna and then ice bath. That's usually that morning ritual. You know, I always like to finish with cold. Can't remember the last time that I had a warm shower, um, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, and that's that's what I like to do. That yeah. helps tone my vagal nerve. Obviously, we know that it helps mobilize fatty acids and for sure the fat to make it a little bit more metabolically active. 
I don't do it for those reasons. I just do it for my emotional stability. Like I am one of those highly strung parasympathetic, uh, sympathetic dominant people. Yep. So, you know, I've like tried me. other devices. I've got like a vagal nerve stimulator that I just used this morning called the Pulsetta. So, you know, I don't like to rely on technology a lot of the time, but sometimes if I'm feeling overwhelmed, then I will. But the ice bath is my number one biohack. You know, we spoke about the human recharger. For That's sure. definitely in the top five, but it's not accessible for me. Ice yeah. bath is. There's always some sort of cold thermogenesis that really, really helps with my emotional stability. I probably uh, need about five ice baths a day at the moment. Talk about your fasting protocol, because obviously, you know, we're both really big into that. You know, I, I hit you up. You had absolutely no idea. I was like, that's interesting. 30 days, like 30 days to shreds is coming out now. So obviously my book came out about a month and a half ago and it's been a massive success. And, but we're both into that and there's a lot of different ways to fast, but can you maybe share a little bit about your strategy, the way you do it? Yeah. So the fasting strategy that I do my, for myself and not for all of my clients, but a lot of my clients are athletic and they're trying to either put on muscle, build fats, whatever. So I give them a controlled fasting protocol and that's what I follow myself. <laughs> What I mean by controlled is I like the Dr. Sachin Pan. And I uh, have coffee or anything like that. I will include essential amino acids and glutamine in there. Try not to go too high on the leucine, but very, you know, get the essential amino acids in there to prevent any possible catabolic effect. Because myself and some of my clients are actually training through that fasting period. Sure. I want them to have some sort of anti catabolic. Uh, in, uh, amino acids in their system. So that's what I usually follow. It's about a 16, 18 hour protocol. I generally do it on my non-training days. Sometimes right. I'll, do a, you know, I've done a five day fast with our friend. Uh, uh, yep. uh, it, it was, who, who did I do it with? Oh, I, I did it with Jag actually. I did it with Jag Tumor and we yeah. were hating life. We were hating life, <laughs> but, we, but we've done it, you know. Uh, but I find that the non-training day fast for me for longevity works you know, way better bro way better yeah. way better well look i mean we write about this in the book um which I, i'm I, i'm waiting on the paperbacks you're, you're on the list to be have to have the paperback sent to you i've got a whole list of like 12 people to have it have it sent out to you guys so you guys have it but the, but the truth is about fasting is is you're right um where people make the mistake is and and obviously you don't fast for bodybuilding purposes. I mean, we're, we're, you know, they're obviously wanting to be in a positive state of anabolism as much as possible and gain muscle and build muscle and stuff like that. But for longevity and anti-aging and biohacking and like where you and I are now in our forties and fifties, I mean, it's an amazing thing for the autophagy, the hormet, the hormetic effect. But, um, if you train fasted and obviously you said it right, like 18 hours without muscle glycogen and liver glycogen, you know, you're getting into trace ketones. That, that's when you're really risking catabolism, especially if you train at any kind of intensity, right? Now you and I know that the majority of people who train don't, don't train, you know, at a level necessary to truly build muscle because they don't, they just don't know how, right? I mean, that's just the, the bottom line. I mean, you've been involved in gyms and own gyms your whole life. And if you go into a gym at any given point in time, you see like 80% of trainers, they don't know how to train to positive muscle failure, right? Like they just they're, give they're up. Warming or, up. They're warming up. I just well, see everyone go to the gym and doing warm ups, basically. It's, it's true. Like I get my clients sending me videos every day. I'm like, dude, what is this? Why are you even taking supplements? Supplements are no use to you unless you're training to failure. You know, and a lot no, of them, have, unreal. Like, I'd say 99% of the people out there believe that they're training to failure. Yeah, but not. 1 are. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. We're, we're, we both, we, we, you and I could do an amazing lecture on this. It's absolutely true. You go to any gym. Well, remember I told you this like four years ago, I was like, dude, I have a great idea. Like we should build a, we should create a mockumentary where we go to all the gyms in the world. We could go to like two on the West coast of America two, you know, two in Europe, one in India, you know, go to North Africa, South Africa, go to Australia and just videotape an hour at each gym and see how many people are actually training at any effective level. And you're right. It's 1%. And honestly, dude, let's be honest. Cause you know, you and I come from this background the bodybuilding magazine industry or world or whatever you want to call it before the internet made it worse because they put programs in there that were like, you know, six, you know, exercises per body part, five to seven sets, eight I, to ten reps. I was the one, I was one of those people that were writing those articles for Flex Magazine on behalf of the pro 
pro bodybuilder who had a contract with Weida. You know, it was supposed to be their column, but there was people like myself, Sean Perrine, uh, Greg Merritt, that were writing those articles. Yeah, I know, but it's crazy because you and I know this, and I've watched you train, and I've seen some of the stuff you've done with Branch Warren, you know, who's an absolute fucking beast. I mean, talk about maybe one of the most insane trainees or trainers of all time. Like, he trained at such force production. To, you know, to be that does. little and look does. like he does, right? Like he's an animal, but, and I've watched him you know, before I even knew you, you know, way back in the day. But the bottom line is most people are in their mind keeping stuff in reserve, right? Because mentally they're like, well, I got three more exercises and 24 more sets. And so they yeah. never take their body to positive muscle failure because they're so confused. And I'm not making excuses for people because you, you and I both know that you're right. Some people just don't know what it really means to train to that level. But it's just, there's just, bro, you, as you know, I know when you talk to people now today, the probably the biggest feedback that guys like you and I get is like, I don't know who to listen to. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. so many divergent sources of information. You yeah, know what I mean? A lot of them like contradict each other. Like I, <laughs> when I was the editor in chief of bodybuilding.com, we had like 160 writers and I'm going through this. I'm like, well, I've just published this article, but now this article is, <laughs> you know, it's like, who's right? Well, I'm sure there's different ways of climbing Mount Everest. You just got to find the one that fits with you. After exactly. Through, through trial and error. You know, I'm very good friends with Dorian Yates, and I used to train his heavy duty style for yep. many, many years. But it caused a lot of complications with me. And let's, you know, let's 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 be aware that not everybody has the mentality of Dorian Yates, where you can put everything exactly. Into one set. Like I right. think that I train hard, but when I train with him for one set, I'm like, okay, I'm definitely leaving. <laughs> There's no, there's, I have been leaving fuel in the tank for that next set and the next set, because after that one set, you literally cannot do it. Well, bro, that's set. what I, so I tell people this all the time. I'm glad you brought that up. So I trained and I've not, I've never told you this, but I trained under Marcus Reinhardt for two oh, years yeah. in Las Vegas, Yeah. you know, before he completely went off the deep end and went to jail and did all the other things he's in. But Marcus was Mike Mentor's disciple. Right. So like if there was anybody that trained HID similar to what Dorian would do, I did that. And, and, and truthfully, what you said is true. Like if you're like us and you have a career and you have businesses to run and you have family to attend to and a life to uphold, that collapses your central nervous system. You, you can't it, train at that kind of intensity, dude. It does. And after a while, it does cause inflammation. Like I had oh. tendonitis, I had problems with my oh, back because I'm training oh. so heavy. Oh. So what I like to do now, I kind of like to cycle my training. So I'll go heavy-ish for one week, you know, about eight to 12 repetitions, usually towards the 12. And yep. then I'll do about 18 to 20 repetitions exactly. the week following. Yep. And the week after that, now I'm doing anywhere between 10 and 30 repetitions yeah. within that workout. And then right. I'll re return to that cycle on the, on yep. the fourth week. And that it's helps. Cra it's crazy how, as you get older, you realize that higher reps are the key because oh, sure. the connective tissue the connective tissue strength, we don't have synovial fluid in our joints. We don't have the synovial fluids in our discs and our lower back. We can't do what we did in our 30s and even in our early 40s. Um, I mean, you can, right? But you can't at the intensity or the amount of weight that you did then. So you, it, it's really about learning what you can't and can't do. And as you know, bro, so many guys, because you, you and I see this still to this day, they're still going in there and trying to lift heavy you know, in their late forties and early fifties, and then they injure themselves and then they don't train and get fat. And then the excuse is, well, I, you know, I got hurt. It's like, well, you got hurt because what the fuck are you doing, dude? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. And a lot of people don't understand that you can actually create growth and evolution within your physique just through intensity. 100%. So when I say in intensity, it doesn't have to be like the poundage that is written on that bar. Your muscle has no idea what numbers are on or yep. that dumbbell. And it doesn't have to be the amount of reps. It's the intensity. So I like to train yeah, with quite a, a decent amount of volume, but my rest periods are very, very, very short. So when a pro bodybuilder, like a big pro bodybuilder trains with me, a lot of the time they can't keep up, not because they're, you know, I'm stronger than them, I'm not, but they just cannot come up, they cannot keep up with the intensity. But that intensity in itself with the short rest periods causes trauma. 
And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create a traumatic experience that's for exactly the body right. to have purpose to change and grow. And you can do that without the running the risk of injury. So that's why I tell people, don't wait three minutes between a set. You're going to replenish too much ATP or like too much glycogen where don't worry about that. Don't worry about your ATP and glycogen. Well, the glycogen is going to be there anyway, providing, you know, your liver and muscle has been fueled enough then just shorten the rest periods. Whenever your brain is saying, rest a little longer, fight against that, go in and do another set. It's going to be better for you in the long run. Bro, the, the funny thing is, is like, we write about this in 30 Days to Shreds. Um, the the power man, or, or, or let's just call it the strength athlete, power lifter mentality. And look, Mark Ripito is a good friend of mine. I've been on his podcast. You know, we had a profound podcast on testosterone optimization and stuff. And I think he's a great guy. And he's a great teacher. But too many people have fallen prey for that type of training that A, don't have the genetic profile because, you know, it's all biomechanics. We're mm -hmm. all different. You know, some of us have longer legs and arms and others. Some people are like really upper, strong upper torso and tiny legs and vice versa. So it's like there's this biomechanical element, but you said it best, man. Higher rep ranges allow the body to utilize all three of the energy systems. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, you, and both muscle fibers. Exactly. I was just going there. Like literally when you start training all the energy systems over time, you really do enervate all the different fibers. And, you know, there's no such thing as not changing fiber, to fiber types, right? Like you can't exactly. think that you can't go from 2A and 2B to, you know, aerobic glycolytic and, and vice versa. And look, a lot of us used to think, you know, 20, 25 years ago, the science was like that the aerobic muscle fibers weren't important for bodybuilding. That's absolutely not true because that's what's allowing you and I to train in 60 second rep ranges. Yeah, exactly. And you look at, you know, you mentioned Branch Warren earlier. Uh, look at the size of his legs. His legs were definitely the strong point. He always trains between like 30, 50 repetitions. Exactly. A lot of drop sets, a lot of intensity. Like exactly. out of all the pro bodybuilders, like his rest periods are very, short very very short but that intensity is what allow his legs to grow yes and he grew because he was literally in those 30 to 50 rep ranges he always hit every single energy system he fatigued every energy system and he allowed maximum force production through the intensity that he trained and that's the key you said it the amount of weight you lift has literally nothing to do with it. it's how much force how much torque are you absolutely generating? And then again, how often are you hitting all the energy systems? Because, bro, all the energy systems create, create bleh, produce and create so much lactic acid that the lactic acid, you know, when you can clear lactic acid a lot faster because your body is so efficient at clearing it, that's how you build muscle. Yeah, it's exactly. Literally and, and, and clearing a lot of that nitrogen as well. And yep. some people would argue and say, well, you know, you just got to make sure that you have your form correct. Well, we mentioned Dorian Yates before, textbook form, tore his bicep, tore his tricep, yep. tore his quad, had shoulder issues, you know, so it's not about that. It's just you have to be smart with cycling your training protocol. Yeah. And you tore your, your triceps too, right? Yeah, that was snowboarding. Yeah, I've torn a lot of things. I've torn my trap. I've torn my pecs. I've torn my lat. I've uh, torn, uh, you know, my rotator calves. I've torn my tricep. I've, I've torn a lot. Torn my hamstring. None of it in the gym is all outside of the gym doing extreme sports. Yeah. But, you know, I think we're, when we're in the gym, we're more focused on yeah. the primary movers. But, you know, when you're crashing off a mountain bike or a motocross bike, you're not prepared for that. So yeah. muscles tend to fall off. But, you know, going back to all those muscle tears that I've had, I don't use that as an excuse. You just have to be smart with your training and navigate your way through it as opposed to using that as an excuse. And like you helped me, uh, you know, you and Nick, when I tore my tricep with a peptide protocol, that is usually a career ending injury with the severity of the you had six, like six months, right? 68%, six, 68% of my tricep came off the bone. I had to redrill through my humerus, through my ulna to reattach my tendons. And yeah, like my healing was amazing. But, yeah. you know, being very, very smart with that peptide protocol, my recovery protocol, and then stem cells later, and it really, really helped. Well, let's talk about that right now. I want to go right into that. And before you, you talk about that, I want to set you up because, bro, I mean, I know you know this, but like, fucking allopathic medicine is still so backwards i mean so my daughter my bonus daughter not my real biological but my my uh third uh bonus from my current wife monica who's now an all-american soccer player at point loma in san diego she mcl pcl acl 
detached bone, detached patella tendon. I mean, you name it, as bad as you could get last year. And I remember having this conversation with the orthopedic surgeon. And again, this is a very powerful Division II women's soccer program in San Diego. The college is $65,000 a year, and they got an awesome orthopedic doctor and everything. And I'm talking to him about peptides and all this stuff. And bro, it's like I'm talking fucking Chinese. These people have no idea in allopathic medicine, the stuff that you and I have been doing for a decade. I mean, it is, it's mind boggling that they're still not there. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And you know, like my doctor that has helped me with my uh, surgery, like he is an open mind uh, doctor. You know, he, he works out, he's in great shape. He follows a perfect nutritional protocol. He's really helped me out with my surgeries. But when I spoke to him about peptides and about <laughs> stem cells and all that, he's like, no, 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 there's just not enough research there. There's you know, not enough like, research. Yeah, but then when I go back some months later and they're like, wow. Well, he's what like, what the hell? Yeah, exactly. So unfortunately, <laughs> as, as good as he is, as nice as he is, there's just, you know, they just do not have the advancements because especially when you are a general practitioner yep. and you're going to that doctor and you want suggestions, they cannot learn everything. So they no. literally have three months in nutrition, three months in uh, skin, three months in organs, three months in all these things. So, you know, they will, li people will listen to a doctor way before a personal trainer. But I had three years of education just in training, nutrition, blah, blah, blah. Yes. But unfortunately, we put too much power into the hands of the doctor and we follow it blindly. But they're going to give us a pill over the cure that will help us with our longevity. So we have to research and escape elsewhere. Well, thankfully, thankfully, guys like us are out there now and it's changing a lot, you know, because like like even in my private membership group now, I mean, dude, I have the majority of people in my private membership group are doctors right? Functional wellness people, NPs, PAs. So it's like they realize now that the people that with the, you know, 15, 20, 20 plus years of experience in the biohacking space, weight training, you know, clinical nutrition, all the things that we do now, peptides, stem cells. I want to talk about that hormonal optimization. You know, they know that those are the people that can actually offer the guidance and the wisdom outside of the medical. So it's, it's, it's interesting is how it's like starting to expand and people are now looking at guys like us for that sort of, you know, information and wisdom than relying on the lab coat God, because you're right. I mean, they only, and again, it's all training. I mean, you know, they they have a very narrow focus that medical school teaches them and then they go into practice or residency first and then practice. And it's, again, it's a very narrow focus. And as you know, now too, with insurance subrogation, like they're only allowed a specific thing. And that's why you obviously have to choose doctors that work outside of insurance. Because if you work with insurance doctors, you basically know you're never going to be getting hormones. You're never going to get peptides. You're not going to be talking about growth hormone. You're not going to be talking about anything outside of like big pharma, you know, pharmaceuticals. They're just, it's yeah. just not going to be there. Yeah. 100%, 100%. But luckily, you know, and fortunately, unfortunately, we don't know where the peptides are going to be going. Well, I was just going to go there with you. So why don't you just talk about your experience using peptides? I mean, obviously, we've already talked about your peptides and how you completely healed your uh, tricep, but obviously you use them in your scalp. You know, you've been one of the first guys that I know in the last four or five years that actually injects GHKCU into the scalp. So maybe just talk a little bit about your peptides and then, of course, share your experiences with uh, stem cells, too, because I know you love stem cells, which I do, too. Yeah, absolutely love stem cells. Uh, so like with the, with the peptides, you know, they're all dependent on what I'm utilizing it for. But the one thing that really helped specifically with my injuries was like the Wolverine stack that yep. both you and Nick uh, got me on, which I, I, I think it was like the day after the surgery and <laughs> some days before the surgery that I actually started that stack just to help with the recovery protocol which really, really did help. It was phenomenal. And then as far as my hair is concerned, I've, I always have these companies from Turkey that reach out to me saying, hey, we'll pick you up in a limo. We'll give you first class flights. We'll do your teeth at the same time. And I'm like, what are you trying to say, dude? Am I, am I looking like the dude out of Goonies? But anyway, uh, but I didn't want to do that, especially if, you know, I, I don't know what my hairline would look like. I've always had like a receding hairline. Even yeah, as a same, we're both the same, dude. We're yeah, both so I'm not, I'm not worried about that, but it was yeah. my crown, and I showed you the pictures. Yeah. It was yep. my crown. That's where I was noticing. Well, I wasn't noticing it. My wife was noticing it. <laughs> Every time I look at videos of me doing a lap hold down or something, I'm like, okay, I probably need to consider here. 
So then I started using the product again that you and uh, Nick sent to me. And that was just topical. I was just using that as topical. Of course, you use a demo roller if you want to call that injection. And that had the GHKCU in it. And, um, you know, use the Follow that up always with the red lights. Now, how powerful, if that red light worked, I don't know. I don't know, but I just know through photobiomodulation with that peptide actually can help it enhance it. So that is real. And I showed you the pictures just a couple of days ago. My hair is grown back. Yeah, I was, with I was that to pull I, have, I have the before and afters right next to it. I'll, I'll, we'll put them up when this podcast runs because I don't want to pick them up. And I know you only got a couple more minutes left here. But um, yeah, so I mean, so 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 why don't you share a little bit about stem cells though too? Because I know you've used Josh and Dream Body, and I know you've gone to other clinics and stuff too. But uh, like, is there a specific peptide? I mean, a stem cell therapy protocol that you like? Yeah. So I've cells in Mexico. I've been to CPI. I've been to, uh, I've been to Columbia as well. What I really like with the stem cells, the embryo embryonic stem cells, of course, that are cultured outside of the US. <laughs> I've had them in the US did nothing for me personally. I'm not, you know, discounting them, but it just did nothing for me. However, if I go overseas, I get them for a quarter of the price, yep. much more efficacy. And what I'll generally do when I have that stem cell protocol, and I've had them in, injected in my knees, like I've had an ACL and meniscus tear in my left knee for a couple of years now. But as long as I put stem cells in there, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not having an issue, not having a problem with my training. If I run downhill for some miles, I start to feel it a little bit there, but I want to avoid surgery. And stem cells have really helped that. I've had them injected in my shoulders. Of course, you know, my tricep, everywhere that I've had to uh, tears and where I know I'm going to go through wear and tear because I don't want to slow down. I'm 49 years old now, but I don't plan in slowing down with my activity no. now, throughout my 50s, throughout my 60s. However, I don't want to feel the repercussions of them when I'm in my 80s, when I'm in my 90s. So the stem cells really do help regenerate that. And like I've Every time that I go through an injury, I know I'm extracting that bank of stem cells. You know, when in my younger years, before I got into this industry, I was doing drugs. I was drinking alcohol. I know I was living an inflamed life where I was pulling on more stem cells then. So I want to top up for my future. And I'll do the intravenous as well. I, and I just find after about six months of doing the stem cells, it's like I'm a teenager again. Yeah. You know, I remember yeah. like I jump over like a, a gate or a fence and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to jump. I'm just going to climb down. But then six months later, I'm like, I'm going to jump because now I feel like I've got spring in my step. <laughs> you know, but you have to be, I'd say the hardest part of stem cells for me, because weight training and physical activity is mentally therapeutic, yeah. is taking that time off because you don't want those stem cells to go to new trauma. So if I went and trained my pecs, I did a chest workout, now I'm creating more trauma and those stem cells are going to start to localize towards that area instead of the area that I've just had them injected in. Of course, you know, having the intravenous to finish real with can, you know, kind of be a bit of a cell safe haven for that, but I don't want to run that risk. So I'm very, very disciplined at not training for a good eight weeks with high intensity post the stem cells but that's always the hardest part for me but that sacrifice is always worth it i've sent a lot of clients uh, overseas to get stem cells and not one of them not one of them has had any regret yeah no no so in just a couple minutes that we have um what is your weight training weekly schedule look like right now because i'm sure a lot of people are going to ask that question yeah, it's a typical bro split. You know, I love the bro split. It just works for me. Like I trained legs by themselves on Monday. Friday, here I am on my treadmill and they're still sore. And yeah. I just like that. You know, the more that I push sure. in the gym and it's not for physical, it's not for aesthetics, the better that I feel. Yeah, of I course. feel so much better because, you know, much like you, we're running several businesses. You know, yeah. there's a lot of overwhelm and that is our <laughs> release party, you know. <laughs> so I'll, I'll tr usually train two to three days on dependence on how I feel, dependence on how my sleep is, and then take a full day off. But it's like, you know, it'll be like a chest and biceps. Yep. It'll be a back and triceps. It'll be a legs. And then it'll be a shoulder day, you know. Maybe there's an auxiliary day in there. And uh, on my non-training days, I'm definitely doing, well, you know, I did hit this morning, but I'm going to train today as well. But yep. I, I am enjoying a lot of hit because I think it's very important yep. for us to have good VO2 max, yep. push our lactate thresholds, Yep. And, uh, you know, the most important muscle isn't our pecs or our delts, it's our heart. 
Yep. So a lot of bodybuilders are like static ornaments and they deal with issues in their later life. And do I you, think it's very important that we move. Do you think there's any exercises that at you know our age, because I'm 52 and you're almost 50, 49 now, like that we should not do? I mean, I, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to like limit anything, but are there certain exercises that are just too high risk? Well, for me, it's squats. Yeah, and it, sure. it has been, you know, I don't have the right structure for that. I've got a curvature of my spine. So yep. I stay away from squats and lo and yep. behold, legs are my largest body parts. Yep. Yep. So you don't exactly. need a squat. You know, you, 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 you could do, you know, you could do dumbbell sumos, right? Like my wife and I love holding at dumbbell. Those are absolutely amazing, bro. Of course, that's exactly what I did this week. That's exactly <laughs> what I did this week. I did you know, it grab an hour and a half ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's perfect. There's no strain on your lower back. And, and if, it is, brutal, and if, there is, if there is a strain on your lower back, it's a good strain. It, you exactly. wake up and it's like, what, did I do deadlifts yesterday? Yeah, oh, it's no, totally no. true. That's like one of my favorite exercises. By the way, I'm sure you probably agree with me. I wish we would have done that in our more formulative years. Oh, in our sure. early we, just, we just thought it was for women. We thought it's for women back then. It's like, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get on those Reebok steps and grab hold of a dumbbell. Dude, those are so profound. I mean, literally, just with like a 75 pound, 80 pound dumbbell, and just going all the way down and holding for like a static hold and doing 20 yeah. reps, fucking kill you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I've I've trained with uh, like Milos uh, on several occasions, and Charles Glass mm. only trained with both of them last year, uh, this year actually. And uh, doing some of those exercises with slow negatives yeah, and that good. contraction and you hold it there, it's soul destroying, but it's not destroying your right. connective tissue other than your muscles, which is no, good. It's absolutely true, bro. I mean, and that's the key. And I'll let you go right now. Um, I, I know you got to jump on another one and stuff like that, but you and I will talk. I'll hit you up on WhatsApp this weekend and we'll talk because there's a lot to talk about, especially the red light stuff. But uh Let's bring me on yours like in the next three to four months because I'll, I'll have more on the red light and, and we can share. And then we'll just go much deeper on peptides because we didn't talk about that today. And yeah. dude, the world is about to change. <laughs> yeah, it is. Big time, big time. Yeah, it's like this time went so quick. Unfortunately, I've got to get on another podcast now in yep. five minutes. So let's yep. continue this conversation off air and then back on air. Yeah, for sure. So guys and gals that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, of course, as always, support the amazing people. Follow Chris. I mean, you guys, Chris has like millions of people to follow him on social media. He's got a new supplement venture that he's coming that's coming out with soon, but we can't talk about, but eventually we will because I'm going to be an influencer for his supplement brand, I think. I haven't asked him yet, but I just put it on the podcast. So it's like, it's out there, bro. I don't, I don't, okay. I don't, I don't promote any supplements, so I'm going to promote your... Sounds good, man. I'd love He's to have He's the only guy in the supplement industry that I'll promote. But, man, I love you. I appreciate you. So, girls and girls and guys, again, support him. Follow him on Instagram. Look out, Be on the lookout for what's coming in the future. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. 